I know you've probably seen them at the street corners with their vulgar language and their bullhorns and dressing their Afro-Judean get-ups, telling you that <clears throat> the real Jews and even Jesus and God are black, and the white men will soon be the slaves to the true Jews themselves. They make the claim that the modern-day Jews are actually Edomites, who have hijacked Judaism from blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. Well... Friends, today I'm going to take this so-called black Hebrew Israelite theology and dismember it limb by limb with the hope that the listener could aspire to something greater, something more authentic, ideally toward Judaism. Today I'm basically just going to focus on race in the Bible, mainly to attack their doctrine that the Hebrews were originally black. The way this is going to work is that I'm just going to go through each one of their doctrines gradually revealing its errors. Then you can decide for yourself. Now, to start off, the black Hebrew Israelites claim that Adam was a black man. You heard it many times that life began in Africa, the supposed motherland. So that makes the first humans black, right? It's actually a secular theory that teaches that human life first originated in Africa over 200,000 years ago. This theory also denies a creator and leaves it all up to random circumstances. Now, friends, I'm not anti-science nor against using the Bible to justify science or vice versa. But when dealing with theology, we could only use science to justify the Bible when there are no major contradicting factors such as According to biblical geography, the Garden of Eden would not have been located in Africa, but rather in northern Mesopotamia. Now, even though most black Hebrew Israelites would not use this theory to justify their biblical black basis, I'm mentioning it just to dilute any idea that Adam was black because science teaches that the first man originated from Africa. As a matter of fact, the Bible actually calls Adam red. Now, black Hebrew Israelites will tell you that it's not really red, but rather he was created from the dust of the ground, so that makes Adam the color of rich soil, which is black. But that's not really the case, because it seems that the Bible knew that someone would make that silly argument and even named Adam red. Dam in Hebrew means blood. And what's the color of blood? You guessed it, red. And it's actually from the same root for red, which is Adam. So... Now, Adam, if he was any color, he was not black, but red. And if you actually think about it, how could the woman be black when she was not created from the dust of the earth, but rather from the rib of Adam? And ribs do not transmit racial features. If anyone is dumbfounded on where we can find red dirt, just visit Alabama or Georgia and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, Adam was not black and he was not white. Actually, black Hebrew Israelites seem to believe that, biblically, there are only white and black men. And any notion that something in between could have existed really hurts their racist agenda. It's actually a bit ridiculous to try to apply any race to Adam, the first man, who was made in the image of God and who represents the making of all humanity and not one person or race of people. But that's not all. They also teach that non-blacks are just a mutation of black albinos. Friends, when we begin to racially analyze a text, a total ethical breakdown begins to occur, where the book that was given to us to elevate our lives is used to oppress and discriminate via race. So, what are the origins of the white race? Well, according to the black Hebrew Israelites, Esau was the first white man. White? How could he be white when the black Hebrew Israelites teach that his father Isaac was black? Well, they teach that he was an albino, although this appears nowhere in scripture. The teaching stems from the idea that because scripture states that Esau was born red or reddish, it means that his skin was so white that his blood showed through his skin and blood is red. Now this is a ridiculous doctrine because we see that when Adam is called red, they say he was black. But when Esau is called red, they say he was white. <laughs> Even when both cases use the same Hebrew root word for red. Actually, if we're looking for a people with a reddish color to the skin, then we don't have to go too far. Many people fit that description in our world today. So, why white people? I'll tell you why. Racism. But actually, the verse states that he came out red, such as a hairy garment. So it may have been referring to the color of his hair, not skin. But they still overlook this. 
Now, I really don't care what color Esau was, but we do know that Esau was the father of what became the Edomites. And for someone to pin a race on one of Israel's enemies just to label the members of that race with having an evil background is just wrong. Actually, if you do a study for the word red in Hebrew, you'll find that King David is also called red. When the black Hebrew Israelites claimed that he was also a black man. Also, in Song of Solomon, we see that Solomon is also called red. Furthermore, in Lamentations 4.7, it states that the Hebrews are referred to as red. As a matter of fact, the biblical text also states that Esau's wives were black women. Now, wouldn't that eventually change Esau's supposedly white descendants to not white? And more, who would his descendants be marrying when Esau was the first and only white man? Yes, friends, you know that they would be marrying other people of color, which would ultimately dilute any white complexion they may have had. Now, in respect to the biblical Edomites, the descendants of Esau, Scripture teaches that Obadiah the Edomite saved the prophets who King Ahab of Israel was trying to kill. He hid them and fed them. Now, according to tradition, he is the same individual as the prophet who wrote the biblical book of Obadiah after he converted to Judaism. Yes, converted to Judaism. It's a biblical concept, even though the black Hebrews do not believe in it. Scripture even teaches us that we are to respect Edomite converts. Edomite converts. Well, that's kind of hard to do when black Hebrew Israelite theology teaches that one cannot convert to be an Israelite. Now, who are you going to believe? The black Hebrew Israelites or the Bible? And even more, biblical history teaches us that the Edomites were also known as the Idumeans who all eventually converted to the Jewish religion. So what the heck are they talking about? Now, black Hebrew Israelites also teach that when Exodus 4 states that Moses put his hand into his bosom and he pulled it out and it was white, it's just another proof that Moses had to be black. Well, friends, you don't have to be a genius not to assume that this does not teach that Moses had to be black in order for the whiteness to show on his hand. Have any of you Israelites ever left the streets of the U.S.? Have you ever traveled to the Middle East and seen the color of the people there? Now tell me, do they have to be black to make the verse make sense? Furthermore, the black Hebrew Israelites also use Lamentations 5.10, where they say it states, our skin is black, but surprisingly leave out the rest of the verse when properly translated states, our skin has become as hot as an oven because of the burning of the famine. Hot, my friends, not black. They will say, well, it may be hot like a furnace. And what color is a furnace? Well, it's black. Friends, <laughs> a furnace may perhaps be black, but not in reference to this verse, which is stating that hot here is due to the famine. There is no reference to a color, but rather the temperature of the skin. But again, they fail to read the verse in its entirety. And the black Hebrews also use Amos 9.7. Which reads, Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? But again, friends, again they fail to read the verse in its entirety. It states, Are ye not as the children of Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Hath not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines out of Kaphtor, and the Syrians out of Kir? You see, this verse is clearly not speaking about the color of the Hebrews, but rather of the greatness of our God. Clear as mud? Furthermore, they use Jeremiah 14, verse 2, which states, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof of languish. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Friends, it will help these black Hebrew Israelites if they studied Hebrew as much as they used foul language. Because here, the word kadru does not mean black, but it's synonymous to mourning, to grow black. Literally, to sit on the ground and apply ashes to one's head. We also see that Miriam, Moses' sister, was cursed because she grumbled against Moses for having married an Ethiopian woman. This was obvious one of the Bible's first displays of bigotry. How could she have complained about the complexion of Moses' wife when she herself was black? And finally, my favorite verse that the black Hebrews like to distort to claim the Jews were black. Song of Solomon 1.5, which states, I am black, but comely, beautiful. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. I am black. Now, there is no doubt that the person speaking here is black. 
They even use the proper Hebrew word for it. But anyone, anyone who has read the preceding verse would know that this is not King Solomon speaking, but his mistress. This is ridiculous, friends. If you're watching me today and have bought into black Hebrew Israelite theology or even Christian theology, I want to offer you a way out. I want to offer you true Torah Judaism. The Jewish people are not a race, but a people united by belief you also can decide to become a full Jew through a proper conversion and be counted as one of God's ambassadors to the world. For more information on Judaism, please visit BeJewish.org. Thank you.